this is Washer Fort and I already love people's sense of humor here. Recently, Irish Times voted on the best place to live and the winner is Waterford. So since we've been doing some videos, if you've been following our channel about the best places to live in Ireland, we thought we definitely have to check this place out and see if it lives up to its name. Waterford is the fifth biggest town in the Republic of Ireland with about 50,000 inhabitants, which does make it quite a lot larger than other towns we've visited like Sligo and Bray. And it's also the oldest city in all of Ireland influenced by the Vikings, as you can see, and lots of Viking-themed everything around the city. Other than Vikings, it's also famous for its weather because it's located in the sunny southeast of Ireland, which statistically does get the most sun days out of the country. And to be fair, today is surprisingly sunny. Waterford was founded as a Viking city, and still, today you can see a lot of the Viking influence, like we mentioned, everything is Viking themed a lot of the time but there's also some of the originally architecture still there so you have Reginald's Tower which currently is closed for renovations but you can tour that and what we did as the abbreviated version of getting to know the history is we went to the King of the Vikings VR experience now for me it was the first time using VR so that was an experience in itself um, but other than that, it's also a very interesting experience to just get to know the city a little bit, like to have a very quick introduction to the history and all the influences. If you want more of the history, there's also several museums, including the Medieval Museum, the Silver Museum, the Museum of Time. So there's a lot more exploring to do also stuff if on a rainy day you just want to stay inside. This behind us is Waterford. Yeah, it only took us battling with several, you know, bushes to get up here. Yeah, this is supposed to be uh, some sort of cliff walk. Uh, call it more of a bush walk. But this is the view that you're greeted with at the end. As we just learned by starting to sweat trying to walk up a hill, is that Waterford has a lot of hills. And it's quite interesting with the houses, you get a lot of river views because they just built them layer upon layer, street behind street which does make for like, a nice aesthetic if you're overlooking the city or just looking up into the hills. It also probably makes for very fit people if you go around walking everywhere. So now you must be wondering exactly what is the lifestyle here in Waterford. Well, the city, yeah, one of the major things that you recognize first about the city is most of the city center is actually pedestrianized. There's this cool thing where we're wondering, why does this parking lot at the edge of the city look like it goes on forever? just so that you can have the city nice and pedestrianized. There is this really cool eating shopping district where you can walk from almost, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes walk from one side to the other and you hardly encounter any cars at all. And in this section, there are your places to shop. There's a lot of independent shops and local shops like butchers and hairdressers and barbers. A lot more than you would see in most sections of the city centre in Dublin. As well, of course, there's your obligatory pennies and so on like that. Because where in Ireland doesn't have a pennies? But at the end of it all, there's this place called the Apple Market, which is not a place where we sell electronics, but more of a nice resting food eating area. There are a couple of restaurants out there. We actually had ate there two two nights, two days in a row with some delicious food, including some vegetarian food. Even if it's like an early Saturday morning, you'll see people coming, having their lunch there, also completing their shopping for the day, because there's all the stores that you would need there as well. And the food isn't just concentrated only in that area. As you walk around this pedestrian district, there are lots of cafes and different eateries. You've got stuff like uh, burritos. Hey, we even had an Afro-Caribbean, you know, little restaurant there for takeout that we had and was delicious. It's been so long since the wine had this much plantain. Yeah, she, she was quite a happy person. Waterford had this beautiful mix of old and new that you can walk through and admire at your own leisure in between shopping and getting some food to eat. When I went to look up why Waterford had won Ireland's best places to live by the Irish Times, the biggest reason that kept coming up is affordability and of course if affordability is something you're looking at and you're comparing it to lots of other places around Ireland that is a huge selling point 
So I went to look at DAF to see how much stuff there actually is. There isn't that much places to rent up online right now. Could also be because it's the semester would have only just started. They have a college here, which is usually in a city where a lot of the rental options get taken up by the students who come in for the winter semester. But in general, there was relatively little to rent. However, there's way more options to buy. There were a surprising amount of properties around 100 to 150k. To be fair, a lot of them look pretty old and the bear ratings aren't that great. So I'd expect you'd also need to invest some money into just renovating those places, maybe put in some new windows, work a bit on the insulation to make sure that then what you didn't buy in a housing price, you didn't have to pay in electricity bills afterwards. So they're maybe not as cheap as they look at at first glance, but they're definitely more affordable options than, let's say, as an extreme comparison in Dublin. There's also a lot more not as super old, but like still a little bit dated houses from like ranging around 250k up and down. And there's still a lot of options in that area as well. The houses do go up to very expensive, like I saw one property for 800k, which had the lovely description of a sweeping driveway and landscaped gardens that, are, that already tells you perfectly what kind of property that is. And it seemed a bit strange in comparison to the other houses we were seeing. But as we walked around yesterday, we do so where a house like that would fit in, like just nestled around the golf course. There is a quite of ridiculously huge, expensive looking houses that would also cost a lot more money. But realistically, if you're looking to buy, if you don't mind having to renovate a place, you probably have a much easier time finding a house here. If you're looking for a new build, then it gets trickier. From what we've seen, it's very hard to find any actual prices. They, they like to use the price upon application kind of things if you look online. We also had a bit of a look while just walking through the streets and walking past real estate agents. And there the prices do look a lot more like what you expect from Dublin. So for like, uh, you know, your suburban looking house, you can expect to pay around 600 something K. That seems to be more the price range for the new builds. One of the reasons we heard that Waterford is popular is how they managed to regenerate the older parts of the city. And we were like, okay, let's let's see how much can you do to really regenerate a place and give it a new personality. And I'm like, it turns out a lot. There's so many gorgeous murals all around the city centre. As you just walk around, you keep spotting more and more. You turn down a new street you haven't walked down and boom another mural next to another mural and they're all really amazing art pieces. Now for the actual demographics of the area, what we can tell um, when we were sit down eating, we saw people from all ages um, partaking in the revelry of the evening. It's not just like some parts of Dublin where you would have only the younger looking people going in an establishment. If you're from all ages, you know, got your elderly couples to your young couples with kids. Uh, the interesting thing that the wine did realise is that, unlike what we see a lot in Dublin, the number of children people have is two and not one. Call us a bit crazy, but this would indicate from, because we all know, hey, having a child is expensive. But somehow, we've got, we've seen a lot of people with two children here, which would kind of indicate that whatever the lifestyle or cost of living here, it might just be cheap enough that someone would go, sure, have a two kids instead of one. Hey, why not? In addition to seeing people from different ages, there are also a bit of a mix of cultures here as well. As we walked through the side streets, we saw a variety of restaurants. Um, besides the Afro-Caribbean um, takeout place, we also saw lots of places for burritos, as well as lots of Asian different food places as well, and a couple smaller local grocery markets that were selling world foods. So there's definitely a place where people have settled from different countries and regions, now calling Waterford their home. During our time there, some of the activities we got up to were visiting Waterford Castle Hotel. It's an island in the middle of a river, but it's only accessible to guests, so we bit to lunch there just for the ferry ride. The cliff walk to see Waterford from above. Warning though that the path is quite overgrown, but clearly well trodden. And we also went along the main part trail along the riverside. Yeah, this was a nice little walk. I think it'd be definitely better during the summer. 
but it's not too far from the city right by the riverside. We were quite impressed with Waterford. We weren't expecting such a vibrant city centre and how easy going and comfortable it was with having this large pedestrianised area. Even though the city is not by the seaside like Bray, I will take a river over no body of water any day. There are also plenty of green spaces along the river, not just the ones we walked, but also the Waterford Greenway. And with a short car ride, you're by the beach or by the mountains. So there is plenty of things to do beyond what we did. We saw a lot of schools and in general in town, there's just a lot of entertainment and food places that it felt like you wouldn't get bored easily in Waterford. Thank you.